We wanted to make this video for some time. Um, when David passed away, it was obviously uh, life shattering. And uh, I, I gotta say, I lost my mind. Um, uh, I was uh, just not able to process, you know, that David was no longer here. Uh, David uh, didn't die from any wrongdoing. He simply combined those two basic needs that we have to eat and to breathe and those two basic needs collided and uh, in the process of eating David's airway became obstructed and uh, despite all odds in favor of his survival uh, surrounded by many many people uh, an off-duty police officer who immediately put him in the Heimlich EMT on site an ambulance already on site at the time of the incident um, despite all of that somehow uh, David didn't survive and um, couldn't bring him back although I prayed that God will resurrect him I really did I prayed and I, I remember just visualizing uh, Dave uh, coming out of the grave and 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 coming home and uh, that didn't happen um, so I began to think well you know Dave where where I mean I know I put him in the ground but you know I was always taught to believe that we were dichotomous, uh, that we were able to be separated, that there was an internal being inside of the shell, and that that internal being never died, and that we, we survived death somehow. And so I was concerned about where David was, who he was with, uh, who was protecting him, who was providing for him, because obviously it's what we parents do. We provide for our children, we take care of them, you know, we are you know, we are always vigilant, you know, watching over our children and, and fearful that, you know, that they could get hurt. And so, you know, I was concerned about, you know, what, what had become of David, you know, and uh, was he afraid and uh, who he was with. And, you know, common religion had taught me up until that point, you know, that very, very few people uh, would go to a good place after death, that the majority, the vast majority, would end up in a place of eternal torment uh, described as uh, blazing fire, darkness, sulfur, um, screaming, uh, all kinds of heinous, uh, horrible thoughts uh, come to mind when you think of this place called hell, which is, which is the abode, according to common religion, of the majority of God's creation. That means, you know, that the odds are stacked against most of our children, our parents, our, our loved ones, our friends, and our neighbors, our family, that when they pass away, and we all do, that the vast majority of them will be punished, and tormented, tortured even, forever and ever and ever and ever. For crimes that they committed in this life, in David's case, David only lived 16 years, but his sentence would be an eternal one, either one of life or one of suffering or torment. Because according to uh, common religion, everyone lives eternally, except that uh, only a very few select will go to heaven. And depending on who you ask, that varies between uh, you know, what you believe or how you live or a combination of the two, or what sacraments you received, and you know, all that can come into to, uh, play in determining where uh, you will spend eternity. And so I began to just uh, be very, very concerned, even uh, tormented uh, about you know, David's well-being. And you know, most of my friends and family immediately uh, told me, David's at a better place, David's you know, with the Lord, you know, and, when I asked them why, it all came back to, well, David was raised in a Christian home, and David believed in Jesus Christ, and, you know, and David was a good kid, and those were all great things and true, but, you know, the reality of is, is this, is if the odds are stacked against someone, how do we know what they truly believe deep down in their heart? How do we know, you know, if their works were good enough, or if their belief was strong enough? And so... The possibility of heaven was so outweighed by the probability of hell 
that I had to had to find answers. And I saw answers from the Lord as to why this happened. And God hasn't given me the answers, but He did did lead me lead me on a journey uh, to help me understand and gain peace about where uh, David's final resting place will be. And you know, today I'm confident that David will live again. And um, and that's because Jesus Christ died and, and paid the, the penalty of uh, sin for all of mankind. A second Adam uh, was victorious over death. And so as a result, you know, in Adam we all die, but even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And that all includes David. And it's a lot more reassuring to trust in what Jesus did than what mankind has done. To leave it to the folly of mankind to choose rightly or do rightly and to determine their final eternal uh, uh, place of, of either bliss or blisters it's just uh, it's just uh, really not a very reassuring thought and so I turned to scripture and I basically just uh, you know started from scratch you know what is God what is man what is life what is death and you know in the process I uh, I came up I, I developed uh, you know uh, a better understanding of God's love and His grace and His mercy, and and I understood that the that the God whose mercy is new every day, whose mercy endure, endures forever, this God of love, you know, who you know, according to Scripture, uh, love doesn't take account wrongdoing. This God who tells me to bless them that curse me, to do good to them that do evil to me, that I may be like my Father, which is in heaven. That this God who sent His only Son to save the most lost will certainly save the most lost and so you know some of the things that I've been working on I I put together a CD uh, um, a song that I wrote for my son and, and it declares the the uh, the hope that I have that I will see David again because of the resurrection uh, not because David died and went to heaven uh, that's not what scripture teaches but that because Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again, that David will follow the same path. David died, was buried, and will rise again on the last day. You know, the way uh, uh, Lazarus' sister thought of her brother when Jesus came, she said, Lazarus will live again. She said, sure, sure, what on the last day. And in that case, Jesus intervened and caused Lazarus to become alive. Um, that very day but for the most of us uh, we will see life again in the resurrection uh, um, on the last day at the trumpet of God and so I put together a song I want to invite you to listen to it uh, you can find it at www.davidwilllivegain.com and it's amazing you know unfortunately you know I've gotten mixed uh, uh, reactions mostly negative from people uh, you know about my hope uh, in the resurrection and my hope that uh, Jesus Christ uh, paid the sins of the world uh, for the sins of the world and that as a result that we can trust God wholeheartedly that he will have victory over death his last enemy and that once that's done that Jesus Christ will subject himself to the Father that God may be all in all because the reality of it is this that God was pleased by the blood of the cross to reconcile all things to himself and is right now working on saving all of mankind as a result every knee shall bow every knee shall bow so again I want to invite you to listen to uh, uh, the song um, you can also look forward to the book uh, uh, the book of David uh, I don't know if you can see this on on there but uh, that's uh, that's in the works and uh, I want to invite you to listen to, to the song and, and check out the book once it's available and uh, just trust in the Lord that God is a, is a good God. He has to be a good God. And a good God certainly could not, could not devise such a heinous uh, end to the majority of his uh, creation. <laughs> 